Welcome back. In our previous segments, we delved into the intricacies of linear motion and rotational dynamics, unraveling the nuances of objects moving along straight and curved trajectories. In this video, we will delve into the characteristics of an object displaying perpetual motion. By the end of this video, you will be acquainted with the terms period and frequency. Additionally, we will explain the characteristics of simple harmonic motion and delve into the concept of phase shift. To wrap up our discussion, we will finalize by formulating the equation of oscillatory motion. Keep watching until the end of this video to delve deeply into the fundamentals of oscillatory motion presented in a concise and insightful manner. Observe the horizontal spring mass system presented on the screen, wherein one end of the spring is connected to a weight, and the other end is securely attached to a fixed point, such as a wall. The weight is positioned on a frictionless surface, allowing unhindered movement and resulting in a repetitive cycle of motion. This to and fro movement of the weight is precisely what we define as oscillation. Now, we will position the weight at a point where the spring is neither stretched nor compressed. This specific location is termed the point of equilibrium, where no force is acting on the weight in either direction. Okay, let's compress the spring, and release it to observe the oscillation of the spring mass system. Observe the weight moving away from the fixed point, then returning towards it, creating a repetitive cycle of motion. The spring, functioning as a restoring force, plays a crucial role in this oscillatory movement by pulling the weight to and fro towards the equilibrium position each time it is displaced. What's noteworthy is that in this example the absence of any opposing force, or friction on the surface, allows the oscillation to continue indefinitely. The perpetual back and forth movement, exemplifies the nature of oscillatory motion, providing a clear illustration of an object oscillating about a fixed point. This fundamental concept finds application in various physical systems, offering insights into the behavior of objects engaged in oscillatory motion. Take notice that as you observe the oscillating object, the displacement to the left and right is symmetrical. The distance it travels to the left mirrors its travel to the right. Additionally, you can observe that the time required to finish each oscillation remains constant. This consistent time interval needed to complete one full cycle of oscillation, is known as the period of oscillation. Typically measured in seconds. Let's draw a comparison, between the oscillation of the weight, about the equilibrium position, and a sphere rotating on a circular path at a uniform angular velocity. The radius of this circular path, precisely corresponds to the maximum displacement of the weight from the equilibrium, and the center of the circle is located at the equilibrium point. As seen on the screen, when the sphere completes one cycle, the mass also undergoes one oscillation. Therefore, both the mass and the sphere share the same period of oscillation. In simpler terms, we can conclude that both the mass and the sphere possess identical oscillatory characteristics. For the purposes of this example, let's denote the angular velocity of the sphere as omega, measured in radians per second. Additionally, we consider the time required to complete one revolution as t seconds. This, indeed, is what we define as the period. As the sphere completes one revolution, the angle it has displaced is 360 degrees, or equivalently, 2 times pi, if measured in radians. This is known as angular displacement, or rotational displacement. Now, we can express the angular velocity of the sphere, as the angular displacement, divided by the time it takes to complete that angle, which is the period. However, it's important to note that when we relate, omega, to the spring mass system, it is termed as angular frequency. Despite the terminology difference, the quantity and units remain the same. Frequency is defined as the number of complete turns, or cycles completed in a second, and it is the reciprocal of the time taken to complete one cycle. This measurement is expressed in Hertz. In mathematical terms, frequency can be denoted as the reciprocal of the period. By substituting the frequency into the above expression, we can rewrite the angular frequency, omega, of the spring mass system, as shown on the screen. With this foundation, Let's transition to the next section, 
to delve into understanding the oscillatory motion of the spring mass system. In this diagram, the red line represents the horizontal component of the sphere's position, as it undergoes its rotational motion. This horizontal component is intricately linked to the oscillation of the mass, that is attached to the spring. As the sphere completes its cycles, the corresponding motion of the attached mass, follows a repetitive back-and-forth pattern. The relationship between the horizontal position of the sphere, and the oscillation of the mass, offers valuable insights into the oscillatory behavior of the entire spring mass system. This visual representation, functions as a powerful tool, aiding in our understanding of how the rotational movement of the sphere, aligns with the oscillatory motion of the mass. In this diagram, the illustration depicts the position of the spring mass system, at a specific moment in time. The radius of the path, along which the sphere is rotating, is denoted by A, and this is equivalent to the maximum displacement of the mass from the equilibrium position denoted by O. At this particular moment, the sphere forms an angle theta, with a horizontal axis. As time progresses, theta is changing. So, we can express theta as a function of time. Okay. Moving forward, let's focus on the displacement of the mass, at this specific moment in time from its equilibrium position. Acknowledging that this displacement is time-dependent, we will denote it as, x of t, and you can find this representation on the screen. Now, let's establish a connection between the angular displacement of the sphere theta, and the displacement of the mass. We achieve this by considering the horizontal displacement of the sphere, as observed in the previous animation. As time progresses, the value of theta changes, leading to a corresponding alteration in the displacement of the mass. This relationship between the angular displacement theta, and the linear displacement of the mass, is described by this expression. As discussed in the preceding section, angular frequency omega, represents the rate of change of angular displacement, and can be expressed as follows. We can reformulate this expression in terms of theta, allowing us to substitute it into the earlier equation in place of theta. In order to determine the velocity, and acceleration of the mass, we apply the first, and second derivatives of the displacement. It's crucial to emphasize, that our derivation is general, and applicable to various systems, not confined to this specific spring mass system. Nevertheless, we will later utilize these derivations in diverse oscillating applications. We have the displacement function, xt equals, a, cosine omega t, representing the oscillatory motion of the mass. Now, to simplify the expression for acceleration, we can substitute this displacement function in place of, a, cosine omega t. The result of this substitution will provide us with a more streamlined expression, that directly relates the acceleration of the mass, to its displacement. The first derivative, denoted by the dot notation, gives us the velocity of the mass. Similarly, the second derivative yields the acceleration of the mass. The expression displayed on the screen is a simplified version without the dot notation. The negative sign in this expression indicates that the acceleration is directed towards the opposite direction of the displacement, effectively always pointing towards the equilibrium position, O. This, derivation establishes the fundamental concept of simple harmonic motion. Through our analysis, we addressed a generic oscillating system. Therefore, in any scenario, where acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, but in the opposite direction, the object's motion demonstrates simple harmonic motion. It's crucial to note that the coefficient of displacement, x, is the square of the angular frequency of the oscillating system, assuming the coefficient of acceleration is 1. In our analysis, we assume that the displacement of the mass is at its extreme right, when time is zero. However, this assumption may not always hold true. At time zero, the displacement of the mass could be at a different point, not necessarily the extreme right. We can express the displacement of the mass using the following expression, where, phi, is a constant representing the initial position of the spring mass system. This constant, phi, is commonly known as the phase angle or phase constant, and remains unchanged with time. 
Despite the shift in the initial position, the mass continues to move with the same angular frequency. Consequently, we can reformulate the expression for the displacement of the mass, as shown here. Substituting zero for time in this equation yields the previous expression. Next, we will follow the same procedure as before, taking the first and second derivatives of the displacement with respect to time, to determine the velocity and acceleration when there is a phase angle phi. Even with a phase angle present in the displacement, the acceleration continues to be directly proportional to the displacement. This is the characteristic of simple harmonic motion. Now, let's delve into understanding the behavior of displacement, velocity, and acceleration. The graph illustrates how each parameter changes as the angle varies. To comprehend this, we must observe how each graph evolves as the angle changes from 0 to 360 degrees, or equivalently, as omega times t changes. It's crucial to recall that angular frequency omega is constant, when the object undergoes simple harmonic motion. Let's place the mass at the extreme right, and release it when time t is 0. At this moment, the velocity is zero because the mass has not yet initiated its movement. However, there is an acceleration directed toward the equilibrium position, O. This acceleration gives rise to a force that propels the mass towards O. As the mass moves towards the equilibrium position O, the acceleration becomes zero at this specific point. However, the mass achieves its maximum velocity due to the momentum generated. This momentum propels the mass to continue moving in the negative x direction. Yet, as the mass starts moving away from the equilibrium position, acceleration emerges, directed towards point O. This acceleration leads to a force pointed towards point O, causing the mass to decelerate. As it reaches the extreme left, the velocity of the mass drops to zero. Consequently, the mass loses its momentum to move any further, and comes to a rest, However, the acceleration persists, increasing and pointing towards point O. The force arising from this acceleration pulls the mass back towards the equilibrium position O. As the mass reaches point O, the acceleration drops to zero. However, due to the momentum the mass gained while moving with acceleration, it does not come to a halt at point O, instead, it continues to move past point O. As the mass goes beyond point O, acceleration comes into play, leading to a force directed towards the equilibrium position O. Consequently, the mass undergoes deceleration until it reaches the extreme right, which is the same point, where the mass was initially released. This completes one full oscillation cycle of the spring mass system. This cycle will repeat indefinitely, assuming there is no resistance, or damping, that would otherwise gradually diminish the oscillatory motion of the mass. The perpetual repetition of the cycle characterizes the idealized behavior of a simple harmonic motion. Now that we have grasped the concepts of oscillation, let's examine specific instances of simple harmonic motion and determine the angular frequency for each case. We'll start with the spring mass system. The animation portrays a spring connected to an object with a mass of m kilograms, and the spring constant is denoted as k, in newtons per meter. To initiate the scenario, the object is pulled to the right by a distance of a meters, and subsequently released. This action establishes the maximum displacement of the mass on either side from the equilibrium position, denoted as a. At any given time t, the mass is positioned at a distance x of t meters from the equilibrium point, as indicated on the screen. It is important to note that, for our consideration, the displacement in this direction is regarded as positive. In accordance with Hooke's law, the spring will apply a force that pulls the mass towards the equilibrium position. It is essential to remember that we have defined the direction of x as positive, as indicated on the screen. Consequently, we can express this force in accordance with Hooke's law. To establish an expression for the force acting on the mass, let's apply Newton's second law in the direction of displacement. In a prior section of this video, we obtained an expression for the acceleration of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion. Now, we will integrate this expression for acceleration into Newton's second law, which relates force, mass, and acceleration. 
This process allows us to derive an equation that characterizes the forces involved in the simple harmonic motion of the spring mass system. Upon solving the equation derived from Newton's second law and applying it to the spring mass system, we can determine the angular frequency. This angular frequency characterizes the system's oscillatory behavior. Specifically, the spring mass system is classified as linear simple harmonic motion or linear oscillation due to the linear relationship between the restoring force and displacement. To delve further into the concept, recall that in a previous segment, we derived an expression for the period of oscillation, denoting the time taken for one complete cycle of motion. The period is inversely proportional to the angular frequency. By substituting the expression for the angular frequency into the formula for the period, we can calculate the time it takes for the spring mass system to complete one oscillation cycle. This mathematical relationship provides valuable insights into the temporal aspects of the system's repetitive motion. Let's bring some physical understanding to these two equations. Notice that a stiff spring, denoted by a large K, tends to induce rapid oscillations, resulting in a small period or high frequency. Conversely, a large mass leads to slower oscillations, yielding a larger period or lower frequency. In any oscillating system, whether it's a guitar or a violin string, there exists a combination of springiness and mass. If we examine the spring mass system, the springiness is exclusively in the spring, which is assumed to be massless, while the inertia is solely in the block, presumed to be rigid. In contrast, for a violin or guitar string, both elements, springiness and mass, are present within the string itself. When you increase the tension in a guitar string, you effectively raise the value of K, leading to an increase in the frequency of the string. On the other hand, increasing the diameter of the string adds mass to it, reducing the frequency. Essentially, these observations highlight how adjustments in tension and diameter influence the springiness and mass of the string, impacting the overall frequency of oscillation in musical instruments. I trust that the information conveyed thus far is understandable. Before we proceed with the video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could kindly give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and activate the notification bell. Your support means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's get back to the video. In the next example, we'll delve into another case of oscillatory motion, specifically examining a simple pendulum. By applying the principles we've learned within the realm of simple harmonic motion, our objective is to formulate an expression for the angular frequency of the pendulum. Subsequently, using this angular frequency, we'll derive two distinct expressions, one for the period and another for the frequency of the pendulum's oscillations. This exploration aims to deepen our comprehension of the dynamics involved in the simple pendulum and establish connections with fundamental concepts in oscillatory motion. The position you observe on the screen represents the equilibrium position of the pendulum. At this point, the weight of the pendulum precisely counterbalances the tension in the rope, resulting in the absence of any net force acting on the pendulum. In this state of equilibrium, there is no impetus for the pendulum to undergo oscillations. We will now displace the pendulum by an angle theta from its equilibrium position, and then release it. It's crucial to emphasize that the angle theta we're working with is extremely small. In mathematical terms, we consider angles to be small, where the sine of the angle is approximately equal to the angle measured in radians, or the cosine of the angle is approximately equal to 1. This approximation holds true for angles below 10 degrees. By utilizing this approximation, we simplify the mathematical treatment of the pendulum's motion. The schematic diagram provides a visual representation of the forces acting on the pendulum when it is at an angle of theta radians relative to the vertical axis. It's crucial to emphasize that we adopt a convention where measuring the angle in the anti-clockwise direction is considered positive. As a result, when the pendulum swings in the opposite direction, the measurement is taken in the negative direction. This consistent approach ensures an accurate representation of angular displacement, aiding in the precise analysis and interpretation of the pendulum's motion. The angle of the pendulum undergoes changes over time, and accordingly, we express it as a function of time. In this depiction of a simple pendulum, 
the mass of the pendulum is denoted as m kilograms, and the string has a length of l meters without any weight. The tension in the string is represented as T. Next, we will decompose the weight vector into two components, one along the direction of the string, and the other perpendicular to the string. The component along the string doesn't contribute to the pendulum's movement, its role is solely to tension the string. On the contrary, the component perpendicular to the string actively influences the motion of the pendulum. Following this, we will apply Newton's second law for the rotation of the pendulum about the pivot point, in the anti-clockwise direction, considering it as the positive rotation direction. During the application of Newton's second law, the critical factor to consider is the sum of net torque in the direction of motion. When we rearrange this expression we get the formula for angular acceleration. Now, if the angular displacement is small, the side of the angle is nearly identical to the angle itself. This allows us to simplify the expression even more. What we get here is a representation of simple harmonic motion, where angular acceleration is directly tied to the angular displacement. The key factor, the coefficient of displacement, turns out to be the square of the angular frequency, for the pendulum's oscillation. So, we can write down an expression for the angular frequency, just like you see on the screen. Considering the rotational inertia of a mass at a distance L, as shown on the screen, and plugging this into the equation we've got, we end up with the following expression for the angular frequency. By using the previously determined angular frequency, we can formulate a formula for the period of oscillation, as shown on the screen. The period signifies the time taken for one complete cycle of the pendulum's motion. Additionally, we can derive an expression for the frequency of oscillation, representing the number of cycles per unit of time. One notable observation across all three equations, is the absence of the Bob's mass, as a factor. The period or frequency of a simple pendulum is influenced solely by its length, and the acceleration due to gravity. The simple pendulum you see here, behaves like a mechanical system, oscillating back and forth in a vertical plane. Its movement is primarily influenced by the force of gravity, as long as the length of the pendulum remains constant. This property makes the pendulum, a useful tool for measuring the impact of gravity, demonstrating a return to its starting point due to gravitational force. The consistent time period of the pendulum's swing, makes it a reliable timekeeping device. In clocks, we use a pendulum to ensure that the clock hands move in a precise, and accurate manner. Okay, let's delve into another example of simple harmonic motion. In this example on the screen, a spring is suspended from above, and one end is attached to a weight. The weight is free to oscillate vertically without encountering any air resistance. Similar to the previously discussed situation, we make the assumption that the weight of the spring itself is negligible. As you observe this setup, take note of the weight's fluid vertical oscillations, moving upward and downward with a consistent distance covered in both directions. This repetitive and symmetrical motion characterizes harmonic oscillation. What's displayed on the screen is a spring suspended from the top, without any weight attached to it. It's important to note that the spring itself has no weight, and at the moment, it is not stretched. When a mass of m kilograms is added to the spring, it causes the spring to stretch downward, until it settles in a stable equilibrium position. This stretched distance is denoted as ym. It's crucial to highlight that, in this context, we define the distance from the top to the bottom as positive, as demonstrated on the screen. This convention establishes a consistent reference frame for analyzing the motion and displacement of the spring. By applying Hooke's law, and Newton's second law, we can derive an expression for the equilibrium position of the mass. Assuming the spring constant is k, and the force opposing the motion of the spring is denoted as f, we can formulate this expression utilizing Hooke's law. As the mass is in an equilibrium position, and thus experiences no acceleration, the application of Newton's second law, results in this expression for the equilibrium position of the mass. Next, we will pull the mass down from its equilibrium position, and then release it. Consequently, 
the spring will experience additional stretching as it responds to the applied force, striving to return to its equilibrium state. This cyclical process induces oscillations of the mass, leading it to move up and down around the equilibrium position. All right, now let's consider an arbitrary position of the spring and apply both Hooke's law and Newton's second law. We'll assume that the spring stretches by y at time t from the equilibrium position. However, it's important to note that the total amount the spring has stretched is the sum of y w and y. Therefore, when we apply Hooke's law, we need to take into account the total displacement of the spring. In the next step, we apply Newton's second law to the mass in the downward direction, resulting in the expression shown on the screen. Applying Hooke's law, we derive the expression for the opposing force F of the spring. Substituting this derived expression in place of F results in the expression displayed on the screen. The term K times YW in this expression is equal to mg, signifying the equilibrium condition achieved after attaching the mass to the spring. This equivalence allows us to proceed with further simplifying the expression. The resulting expression adopts a format, reminiscent of simple harmonic motion, with the coefficient of displacement enabling us to express the angular frequency, as demonstrated on the screen. Utilizing the expression for the angular frequency, we can formulate equations to express both the period and the frequency of the oscillatory motion. The period corresponds to the time taken for one complete cycle of the motion, whereas the frequency denotes the number of cycles occurring within a given unit of time. In the next section, we will derive an expression for the total energy stored in the spring mass system. Let's assume that the gravitational potential energy is zero, at the equilibrium position. Any potential energy above this position is treated as positive, whereas potential energy below the equilibrium position is considered negative. In the preceding section, we obtain the two equations displayed on the screen, which govern the periodic motion exhibited by any object undergoing simple harmonic motion. Moreover, for the particular spring mass system in focus, we obtained an expression for the angular frequency. By applying Hooke's law and Newton's second law, we further derived this expression specifically for the object when it was positioned at the equilibrium point. When examining the total energy of this vertical spring mass system, it can be deconstructed into three components, gravitational potential energy, potential energy stored in the spring, and kinetic energy arising from the movement of the spring mass system. The expression currently displayed on the screen represents the total energy of the system. Let's analyze the equation together and establish the definition of each component concerning the system under consideration. It's important to note that we are examining an arbitrary position of the mass situated at a distance y at time t from the equilibrium position. The gravitational potential energy at a distance y at time t is expressed as follows. The negative sign indicates that the potential energy is considered below the designated zero level. It's important to note that the spring itself does not possess mass, so only the mass of the object attached to the spring is taken into account. The potential energy stored in the spring is articulated, as displayed on the screen. Notably, the elongation of the spring considered here, encompasses both the stretch it underwent when the mass m was added, and the distance y at time t it moved from the equilibrium position. The kinetic energy is described taking into account the velocity of the spring mass system at time t. Given that the only object with mass is the one attached to the spring, the kinetic energy solely pertains to that object. The energy equation, as displayed on the screen after expanding the spring potential energy expression, allows the substitution of mg with k times yw, as derived earlier. This substitution enables further simplification of the expression. Subsequently, substituting the expressions for y at time t and v at time t, we obtain an equation with a single variable. By substituting omega squared with k over m, we can reduce the expression as depicted here. Utilizing the trigonometric identity that the square of sine plus the square of cosine equals 1, we ultimately arrive at the expression for the total energy in the vertical spring mass system. Notably, 
this expression remains constant for a given oscillation. By using these two provided expressions, we can determine the velocity of the spring mass system, at a specific displacement from the equilibrium position. Thank you for watching this video in its entirety. I trust you found it both informative and valuable. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so to stay updated. Until our next video, take care, and goodbye.